y'all it's american mom i just watched the first episode of season four sopranos and i'm ready to watch the second episode i've already done my review in the last episode so i don't really need to add anything to that I'm just ready to watch this one so let's do this we bought you a car so you could drive back and forth to your internship you don't feel bad that you didn't live up to your end of the deal you hardly broke a C, Meadow, your entire second semester. Maybe you forgot my ex-boyfriend died? Your grades started going down the tubes while you were still going out with Jackie. I'm going to buy a house, you know. No, I didn't. Where? Natalie. So you're going to stay, huh? You're going to become a citizen, too? Nah, you don't need that. How's it going, Tom? Oh, here at Peaceful Acres? Yeah. Just swell. I drove out to Youngstown to see Uncle Paulie, and he was, uh, I don't know, Hoping you could settle this shit with Ralph and the no-show carpenter jobs. He will give Paulie five carpenter jobs. Two no-shows and three no-works. One of the no-shows our friend in Youngstown keeps, and one he gives to Chrissy here. The others, the no-work jobs, as for Paulie, how he wants to distribute them. It is so decreed. With Paulie in the can, there's a new acting capo of his crew. It's Chrissy. Hey, Chrissy, it's your dumb. That's the way certain people want it, and we trust there will be no ill will. First thing I'm doing is getting wings in my hair. You know, like Paul. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. He's like, mm. Can I tell you something? Of course. Sure. My gynecologist says that there's a good chance that I won't be able to hold a pregnancy. Oh, God. I can't believe I'm telling you this. Oh, my God. These diamonds. Harry Winston, baby. He's got more carrots than Bugs Bunny. Give some of that money to your mother. Christopher. Christopher. I had a great conversation with Silvio today. What? What? Tell me. Let's just say that Carmela ain't gonna be first lady forever. <laughs> Does he... What do you care, Tony? Know who she's there like? It's none of your business anyhow. Ralph Schifaretto, Jonathan? Oh. Uh, always fucking something. He knows. If I were a carpenter and you were a douchebag. Hey, what are you doing? Breaking my balls. What's it look like? I tell you, this no show shit is tough. Deciding what not to wear to work, what not to put in my lunchbox. You're breaking my heart. Fiber optic cable, high speed internet access. A lot of money in this shit. Oh, yeah? She did have someone close die. Jackie. But she brings that up whenever you ask her to clean up after herself or, or whatever. And she's traumatized. He was shot to death. Yeah, it's tragic, that kid. Might be helpful if she saw someone. Dr. Wendy Kobler. She's an adolescent psychologist and an educational consultant. What do you mean? Talk about private family stuff like I do here with you? Yes. You don't want her talking about family stuff. Oh, God. I decided to take a year off. You what? And do what? Loaf around the house? Actually, I'm going to Europe with Misty. What are you talking about? And obviously, you don't want me around here. That is not what I said oh, at all. God. Fiber optic shit. So you knew it was gonna be boosted? No. Well, yeah, I mean, Patsy mentioned oh, something. Jesus Christ, if I wanted Patsy in charge. Use your fucking head, Christopher. She's going back to school. They got counselors there, better ones. Ivy League ones. No fucking way she's going to Europe. The talk. Maybe they're the, they're the 
kind of couple that doesn't have to talk constantly. I watch that every night. One beer left. On TV no, Land. Over. Just letting you know. I figured out what's wrong with that broad. That's some bad shit. She's a dyke. No. He thinks she likes Adriana. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. You're abroad. If there isn't a need for it, then why don't He's you let her go? Your year, man, it's just eight months. Because I need it now. You want to go to Europe? Go. Clear your head. Run with the bulls. Do whatever it is the hell they do over there. Thank you. I will. After I left the restaurant, I actually vomited. You were drinking. I smoked a joint with my friends too. That's okay. As long as you didn't deliberately purge. You mentioned Jack's father was in the Mafia. I didn't realize your dad was, too. I used to tell Jackie all the time, don't get involved, stay in school. Get involved? Perhaps they should examine their own needs to have you stay in school. Blow off their self-esteem issues. So you book on Columbia, you can come back when you're ready. Or I could write you a letter to the University of Barcelona. It's a hot school. I'm on a consultancy there. <laughs> She's gonna be so happy she went to her. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Go ahead. What? Knock off the tile? Tony says no. I got your back. Tony be fine with it. Why don't you mind your goddamn business? I don't know. It kind of feels like it is my business, considering I had to haul your last boyfriend out of your kitchen in a hefty bag. You're a miserable fuck, you know that? You're just like Ma. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Really? With your condescension and your sabotage? For your information, Ralph is a great guy. <laughs> Trust me, I got more information than I need about Ralphie. Lilac well, like personal shopping. Five fucking messages, Danielle. Can't you take a hint? Stop fucking calling here. I'm talking about the floor tiles. What floor tiles? Last night, somebody hijacked a trailer. The truck crushed a shed on its way out, too. Oh, the travertine tiles. I distinctly told you to lay off this fucking job. Talk to Silvio. He gave the order, you stupid fuck. Yeah. What'd you call me? Huh? Okay. That's right. That's right. There we go. Little fucking tough guy, huh? You bastard. Chris, come on. You come work on. for me, not fucking Silvio. I told you to knock it off. I'm calling the police. Ralph Bunch over here. Oh, oh, my God. Get out of here. Get him to the fucking hospital. Make sure he keeps his mouth shut. The therapist told her it is her right to go to Europe. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> she actually thinks this is a good idea. Oh, oh, he's going to throw it. May interest you to know she also thinks I should probably be on Prozac. She does? She said that? Wow. Listen to Mr. Mob Boss. What did you call me? All this fucking pussy footing around? Years now? Why don't we just get it all out there? Tony. Shut up. Tony! You got something you want to say to me? What do you mean? What do I mean? What do you mean? All these innuendos. Holy fucking shit. Don't make a scene. You don't want to attract attention. You're in the fucking FBI? We need to talk, Aid. It'll only take a half hour, and I assure you it's in your best interest. Oh, my Chances God. Chances are you and Christopher will just disappear. Get the wastebasket. Ew. He still's in trouble, and he doesn't know it this yet. This tile shit. Misunderstanding. Uh-huh. Patsy, Christopher. Did you deliberately disobey me? Of course not. Because Patsy says you gave the okay. 
This is after Chrissy talked to him. Timeline got fucked up. Philosophy. You have nothing to feel guilty about. It's me she blames. The thing I'm confused about with this episode was the job that we were doing a no show for and then working. I don't understand what that was all about. Like, I didn't know what they were talking about per se, but I could tell Syl was like taking the lead and telling the other guy, like, this is, this is what we'll do. And then Ralphie was like, okay, so that's settled. So, okay. And then at the end, I gather, um, Christopher, they call him Chrissy. He's taken Polly's spot temporarily. Um, he's been moved up yet again. And I think Syl is not liking that. And I think Tony feels like he made the call about smashing the tiles, which was $30,000 worth. And he's making Syl pay for it. Um, he felt like it was done deliberately. Maybe because he was overlooked for filling in for Polly instead of Christopher. That's what I took from it. But I still don't understand the ins and outs of, like, the job they were doing. And Christopher showing up, kind of rubbing it in their face. Like, oh, you have to sit here all day. We don't have to. Okay, well, I, whatever. I can't think too hard about that right now. Um, Adriana's friend, friend from the FBI, Danielle, um, Christopher just was himself and messed all that up. And then she didn't want to see Danielle anymore. And then they were like, you just have to, you know, the undercover thing's done. So they brought her in and I feel a little bit bad for Adriana in the fact that she does need a girlfriend. Like, I wish Danielle was not in the FBI. I wish she was, like, a real person on the show that could be a friend that she could talk to. She didn't think she could get pregnant. It's like she told her some things, and they were together for months. And I felt bad when she was like, you know, is that even your name, Danielle? But she's just kind of mixed up with the wrong kind of people. And... She stays with Christopher. I don't know why. And that's what I don't feel bad. I enjoyed the episode. Um, I think that's pretty much everything that happened. Just a lot of this back and forth with, with Meadow. She was going to leave and go to Europe. And now she's going to stay. But then she had to see a therapist. And she suggested that she be on Prozac as well. The whole family needs just a family size packet of Prozac from Sam's Club. Just get the value family pack. And everybody takes some. One before breakfast, one before dinner. Two good episodes this week. I enjoyed them. Thank y'all for watching them with me. Um, until the next video and the next time. Bye.